Well, this is a pretty classic destroyer type shape. Now, you've got the big bulb in the front, which is the uh, anti-submarine sonar system. So that's, the, that's that part. And then um, you've got a various small arms as well. So you've got 50 caliber machine guns right at the front. And then your main weapon. Former Royal Australian Navy man, Russ French is a very serious model maker. A boyhood passion has become a career path and a flourishing business based in Neuralla in the New England district of New South Wales. They're both uh, 172 scale models, both fully radio controlled. The top one is a model of USS Winston Churchill, which is a United States Navy got a missile destroyer, uh, destroyer currently in service. Mm -hmm. And the front one is the brand new HMAS Hobart which is um, been in commission just over a year. And so you actually make these models for, for defence? Yes, yep, yep. I build, um, the company's been going now for 18 years and we build models of defence equipment, whether it be ships, aircraft, armoured vehicles, weapon systems and things for Department of Defence and their defence contractors. And how much work would go into making Winston Churchill? That was around about a thousand hours part-time so yeah so a lot of a lot of work in it um, because it's not a kit it's all scratch built so it has to be built from uh, basic materials um, making up masters and then molds and then casting parts so this is going to be a 72 scale model HMAS Canberra which is one of the new uh, landing helicopter docks for the Australian Navy uh, both are in service as HMAS Canberra and HMAS Adelaide and this is a 72 scale model of that and we also did the builders models of this for BAE systems which they use for training and display so and how long have you been working on this one this one was about three years in the hull building uh, making the master detailing it and then making a mold of it which I didn't actually do <laughs> uh, but I helped detail the hull um, and then once the hull arrived then it's a matter of, of now fitting it out so we're just waiting on Waiting on engines for it at the moment because this will be fully radar controlled as well. So we're doing all sorts of things here at the moment, doing uh, armoured vehicles, um, new army trucks, um, old army trucks, <laughs> missiles, um, all sorts of bits and pieces. So this is a real boy's own adventure in here, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah boy. The, uh, the toy shop. I started out on the HMS Melbourne, the old carrier on uh, fleet staff and most of my time was spent either on the guided missile frigates HMAS Adelaide and Canberra or the guided missile destroyers Hobart and Brisbane. And where did all this modelling start? This started when I was about six years old. Um, started building models, the, the usual sort of airfix um, spitfires and, and things. Um, when I was in the Navy then it uh, really started to take off and then towards the end of my Navy career I started building models of ships that I was uh, serving on or that were entering the fleet. One of the shipyards found out that I was building a model of one of the ships that they were building at the time and uh, invited me down to attend the launch, bring the model with me, put it on display and they just fell in love with the model and said, right, we want you to start building models for us. And three years later, I left the Navy and it took off full time. Russ laments the fact that high street hobby shops, once commonplace in city and country areas across Australia, are these days very scarce. His hobby shop, with the ship models in the window and the modelling kits on the shelves, is keeping the tradition alive. So unusual, perhaps, the Thunder Graphics Defence models is listed among Urala's tourist attractions. So, um, basically all the boxes are moulds, moulds and parts for different models. We do all our own mouldings, so they're all in the boxes. So basically, everything we make now, we keep a, we keep the pattern and the mould of, right. so we can reproduce them over and over if we need to. You go back to these octagonal shaped panels are a phased array radar. It's called Aegis, and it's a very highly advanced um, anti-aircraft surveillance system. Right. Um, various domes for satellite communications, data links, and things navigation radars and things on the mast, electronic warfare systems. Um, then your first of your um, uptakes for the gas turbines. These are gas turbine powered ships. Um, so they've got four gas turbine engines. 
Mm -hmm. Basically the equivalent of a, an airline, a, um, an engine for a, a DC-10 airliner. Wow. On there. So you've got two, two engine rooms, so two uptakes. Um, in the middle are different decoy systems, replenishment at sea equipment, um, then the fire control systems for the missiles, because they're beam riding missiles. Mm. Um, also, you've got your close-in weapon systems for NAFT, which are a uh, 4,200 round per minute Gatling gun wow. system, all independent. Uh, rigid inflatable boats, uh, torpedo tubes, midships with 25mm uh, close-in guns as well. Then you've got another bank of vertical launch missile systems. Mm -hmm. And then twin hangars underneath with a flight deck and they can carry two Seahawk Romeo wow. helicopters on. So you're obviously a man who has a great attention to detail. Well, that was my job in the Navy actually, was um, visually identifying vessels, um, having to know about what they do and, uh, and what the systems work. So that uh, led me well into, uh, into doing the models. Uh, I can look at something and, and tell what it is and it works well for me. To find Russ's store, just look for the ship models in the window.